Yehovah Malak, Olam Olamat. Yehovah Malak, Yami Rakis. Yehovah Gadol, Makarian Tios. Yehovah Adonai, Yehovah Elohim. Elda et Yehovah. Olam Olam, Yehovah Dabab, Dabar. Shamiamim Yatseb Elohim Dabar Halal Yehovah Dabar Halal Ibasilian Kurios Otios O Pantacreta Basilias Basilian Kai Kurios Kurion Monon Alatanian Tian Jesus Christos Direk Emuna Bakar Vishvat Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh Lelian Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even through the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant, great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkano, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone, and great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk, breath by breath, in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory, understanding that heavens and the heavens and of the heavens, as told in Second Chronicles chapter 5, the description of our Lord our God by the highest on the dwelling place in chapter 6 by Solomon. Even that they cannot contain the word of the Lord of a God, far less he could dwell in the house which I have built, he says. Coming to the church age, every believer has been called to be indwelt by Lord God the Holy Spirit. And as we have been noticing yesterday in Jude chapter, one. There is only one chapter in Jude, verses 14 and 15. We read the two categories of the people. The one being called as Hagios, the saints, and the other are Sabians. In the time of Enoch, the completed canon of scripture, which we have and possess today to know the fate of our lives, in comparison to the temple of the living Lord of a God, as in the past dispensation even a decree was being taken by Cyrus so that Ezra could go back and look to build back once again the temple. Again as such, even the same things when they have built the temple of the living Lord of a God, they describe the heavens and the heavens and the heavens cannot contain the great El Elyon. But now he has made his dwelling place to be every believer's body. So in comparison to such revolution, what we have in our hands, how much pure and holy we have to be, not only the inward as well as the outward. In Luke chapter 11, reprimanding those Pharisees, Christ our Lord of our God says, no, you not the one who made the outside, also he made the inward parts. The very simple logic for us to understand between the soul and the spirit, 
wherewith the soul when we call Lord God made man in his own image we talk about the format soul but we need to look he also made man in the spirit and that image in Ephesians 4 24 we read and the Kaya Swine Kaya Hosea it is the Salatiya so we need to understand that when Lord God the Father made man he made him according to the standard so that he could be uh, aboard of dwelling place in him in absolute standards of righteousness and in truth of his holiness so we say in the Old Testament no revolution given to us about the believers body being called the temple of the living Lord of a God but coming to the New Testament it has been stated know you not that your body is a temple of the living Lord of a God the reason he says for us is that the angels are constantly absorbing us and we are here through the holy manner walk of life walking in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit even to teach lessons for these angels so dear brethren whenever Lord God made man we read that in Proverbs 20 27 the light of Jehovah is the breath of human and that light of Jehovah searches even the innermost parts of your belly or the Hebrew word betan and the word betan meant to say it searches not only your hunger it searches the faculty of your mind it also gives a caution of warning pertaining to the hell that is show hell so this light of Jehovah which is the breath of every human being we need to wake up and understand in the completed can of scripture if Enoch was been said long back what it would be as the way that he has been led to make us the difference between Hagios and Asabians and above all in the church age we cannot be the people like Asabians as we read yesterday but in return we have to be the people to be more alert because the flesh what we have been indwelt it has been indwelt by Lord God the Holy Spirit so keeping these few things in mind we shall have a word of prayer and continue what God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past in understanding how pure and precious we ought to be in this flesh therefore he says in 1st Thessalonians 5 be blameless in your soul in your spirit as well as in your body so that when we could appear before his presence we could be called to be holy so first of all we need to understand the Asabian standards what we are practicing and what we are so that looking into the completed can of scripture in the church age we could make our flesh to be as the Holy One of Lord God being mindful about it and the reasons how he has designed for us to be there dear brethren use the privacy of your priesthood in confession of your sins through rebound we shall continue after this prayer infinitely divine holy father once again coming unto the grace to learn the word as we study these things father we pray that Lord God the Holy Spirit would enlighten and challenge us and make up our lives to understand that though the heavens and the heavens of the heavens couldn't contain thee O Lord that you dwell in this flesh the flesh which is always corrupt in its nature that you have made us to be saints sanctified and kept apart to be a praise and a name and a joy and a glory and honor of your name on this earth help us father in understanding these things by daily carrying your cross making us to renovate the standards of our thinking through the word and as I've said the Lord many examples for us in the Bible particularly in the ministry of my Christ in the gospel of Luke chapter 11 but the house has been cleansed and it has been founded that there is none again it goes with it and gets seven demons more worse than them and the first situation in compared to the old one is very worst so father understanding these things we pray that Lord God the Holy Spirit would enlighten and challenge us by this message so that sovereign Lord every believer could wake up and understand that his body is a temple of the living Lord of a God and as we study these things father we pray that Lord God the Holy Spirit would make us to realize our life and tremble in your presence at their word and not to become Asabians any longer but rather we have to be the kind of of your glory 
To this action, Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, would enlighten and challenge us by this message as we're going to learn. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. In comparison to the things what we have in the church age, we are something unique, we are something great, and we have to realize the man who walked with Lord God stands written for us in the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, that in this world, the two categories of the people, though the Bible distinguishes between believers and unbelievers, yet among the believers, we have much and lot of classifications in the way of life that they are living through. The believer has been encountered to be called as a hagios, as a holy one in the sight of the Lord. Keeping this in his life, a believer has to walk according to the will of God the Father in performing nothing but by getting every thought into captivity for Christ. In this matrix of lusts what we find in this world, we have nothing but sheer rut and we have nothing but using our will and volition to grave, squelch and wax and lie to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in return, when we are being guided and controlled, when he controls us and leads us to march in this pilgrimage trip, he makes our thoughts to be purified day by day and breath by breath by getting every thought into captivity for Christ and making us to realize up to what extent we are called to be immaculate hagios in Christ, having no fault, having no way to show any lack of reverence, having no way to do those things which are against the will and the work of God, demanding in the reverence and the fear of God, and keeping these things encircling day by day in the vertigo fear of the Lord our God, we make known to these people who are unbelievers on this earth as we walk in falling on them the terror of holiness upon them. Whenever they look upon us, they should realize we are the holiest of the holy people. And we are the people wherewith, when we walk in the true holiness and in the great work of Lord God, there will be a terror for them upon them because of we being indwelt by Trinity and we being having in us the completed chaos scripture, which is not just in our hands through the Bible. It has to be in our soul operating and functioning, not just memorizing the scriptures, not just quoting the scriptures, but living by the scriptures, making them to be the principal rule. You know, when the blind man in Matthew chapter 9, where asked, do you believe this? And Christ, our Lord of God, says, according to your belief, let it be done. If you don't believe the word of God to be operating in you, you believe the lies and those lies will operate. That's as simple as that. Your brain is like a transformer it receives and again let go the instructions from it. If you are not giving it proper instructions or proper information from the infallible and inherent word of Lord God, then quite obviously your brain will feed upon the lies realizing that it is the truth. And when you believe not the word of God and you believe the sheer words of lies in this earth, then quite obviously your brain will make your flesh to believe them and they work on that. Therefore, in Second Corinthians 10.5, we have been stated to get every thought into captivity for Christ. Whenever you get a thought, you need to first cross-check. Do they match in the original language of the scriptures? What does the Bible teach to me? Do I have any information and the testimonies of the word of Lord God, wherewith when we have been read, heaven and the heavens of the heavens cannot contain the the, the Lord of a God, far less we could think it could be contained in this small building being made by hands. So when you have such kind of a great Lord of a God, in the same manner in every facet of walk of your life, in every detail of your life, in whatever manner you may think it's a great invention or innovation or discovery, you need to understand man is like just a small house where he has built, as we read in Second Chronicles chapter 6, when when Solomon is praying and dedicating the temple to the Lord. He says, 
What is this small building that you should contain over here? This is what man's knowledge is all about. But the Lord God is heavens above the heavens above the heavens. Shamiyam, you Shamiyam, and I Shamiyam. This is the one what it says in the Hebrew. So the heavens and the heavens of the heavens cannot contain him. In every facet of your life, what you're thinking, in your knowledge, in your understanding, in your way of life, or in your mannerism of dealings with the details of life, it is as simple as that small house which has been built but God the Father is vast God the Son is vast Lord God the Holy Spirit who made man is like that Shamiyamim 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 His heavens of the heavens of the above the heavens such great Lord of a God is our guide. Such great Lord of a God is our teacher. Such great Lord of a God is the one who reveals our enlightenment of our spiritual eyes to understand where we are, why we are, and what we are, and wake up from the human viewpoint and think divine viewpoint. Therefore, we have been said in Second Corinthians 10, get every thought into captivity of my Christ. Therefore, do you know what, dear brethren, in Luke chapter 11, when we have that great parable when Lord of a God is teaching to them, beginning the standards of this life. He tells one simple example where many people in the church age are not following this simple concept so that they could change their entire life and they could be knowing what is right in the sight of the Lord of a God to ask, to seek and to search that you could realize the value and the worth of your calling in the church age. Do you know what does he say for us in verse number 13 of Luke 11? He says, if any of the being evil know how to give good gift to your children, how much more your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. This is what prior to the dispensation of the church age, the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, was being told by them to ask. And then he says for us, again, the parable about the way how the people thought. He was a man who was driving out these demons by the help of the prince of this devil. But then he says an example for us because we need to understand when we are born into this world, we are born the things pertaining to be under the prince of the power of this air and already the operating spirit of the prince of the power of this air in comparison with Ephesians 2, 2 and 3, it has been there in the former lusts of this man walking to the prince of the course of the power of this air. So you have to understand when we are born again we are free under the influence or being free from the influence of such prince of the power of this air. So Satan knows very well when you believe in Christ you have been cleansed, you are Rafa, you are absolutely healed. Therefore, we find in Exodus chapter 5, we read that for us several times in, in verse number 2, in verse number 10, in verse number 16 and 17 as well. We have been telling you repeatedly these things. The translation, what it says, you are idle, you are idle, that doesn't match. It says there, you are Rafa, you are Rafa. By that we meant to say what? You are spiritually clant now. You don't have any influence upon you, the things of the pertaining of this world, until and unless you reject to take in the word of God. If you reject to take the word of God, you have something to replace in your mind and you will be filled with the shirats of this man or the thinking of this man coming with vain philosophy or coming with the beguiling nature of men thinking and falsely called science and wisdom and you replace them and you don't believe the infallible and ignorant word of God which is like the way I have told you the heavens above the heavens above the heavens we have such information not just on this earth you built a small home and you built saying that Lord you dwell here this is what mankind is but we have an information given for us from the heavens above the heavens above the heavens so, when we are having such information, what we do? We wait to take in that every day in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by proper exegesis, isagogics and categories. And what happens if you don't take in? This is what it happens in Luke chapter 11 in verses 24 through 26. When God the Father repeatedly says to them, and the disciples would ask, Lord, how we have to pray, he teaches them the heavenly prayer. And then he says, you being evil know to give good gifts, and how much more God the Father would give to you the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit indwelling in you, and teaching to you the true life. That's what we are enjoying today in this fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath.
So coming back to verse number 24, he certainly pricks our heart to note how hard-hearted will be this man by his ignorance, agnonia, and arrogance. He will not change his life. So we, hand, we find over here an example. Earlier he says that, in verse number 22, When a stronger than he shall come upon him, and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor, wherein he trusted, and divideth his spoils. And he gives a conclusion for us in verse 23, He that is not with me is against me. This is very, very important for us. If we don't gather Bible doctrine, because God the Father has made us, John 1, 12, in comparison with John 1, 18, and if you are not learning the word of God with exegesis, you are against the Lord. And then he says, He that gathereth not with me scattereth. That means if you don't take in the word of Lord God as number one priority in your life, you will become Asabian in simple words. You are against me and you get scattered out. And then he illustrates for us in verse 24, the unclean spirit, the same thing we find in Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 to 45. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places. Wet again resembles to the word of God, water. Dry resembles again, there is again no word of God. Seeking rest and finding none. It wants to go through dry places. And then furthermore, he said, I will return unto my house when I came out. Because, you know, the things, how weak will man he will be, so greater there will be influence about the superstitious thoughts. For example, in my country, India, we should really respect their blind faith, though it could be blind. Just pass down by a road, keep a stone. And then, if you would find, after two or three days, a small garland for it, after five days or ten days, you will find another four stones assembling it, saying that it is God. After one month, they will build a temple for it. You know, this is how, when there is weak will mind, superstitious mind, people fear even for the things which are no gods, even the stone will become a god to them. The point over here is the same. And once you have been rough up, and once you have been cleansed, and once you have been absolutely fine, the thing which you had a thinking earlier of this world, He's been departing from your mind. And this, the thinking of your mind, has not been accepted by anyone. Because the way how this cosmos diabolicus thinking is absolutely sure right. The people who are sound enough in the word of God, they know very well. If they would think they're giving an idol worship or a sacrifice to the idols, we know those things are nothing. But the one who is weak in you as a brother, be careful about him, so that he shall not fall because he's not having the same faith like you. So because of him you take some precautions so that he shall not be stumbled. By that we meant to say what? We always find weak-willed men. The men who don't have proper sound doctrine. And Satan always plays a role in making your thinking to get corrupted. In making your thinking to call gods which are no gods and induce in your mind some standards of morality. And make you to believe lies and worship lies. This is what it happens. So the unclean spirit which has left that man, he walketh through dry places. He tries to go back and to make some business with others, but it finds no rest. Because the people, sometimes, what we are in the church age, we have to be superior than these unbelievers. For example, if a demonic spirit has left thinking about for unbelievers, it is coming to try to stay among the believers. It cannot because believers are superior in the word of God. So it doesn't have any place to play such gimmicks and tricks. So what does it do? It trying to find rest, but it is finding none. So what does it do? It says, I will return to the same person from where I came. In the meantime, when such man who hasn't grown up in grace or taken doctrine, what happens is fate, we will look. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. That's what, when you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you are rafa, you are rafa. That's not a just a end, that's just a beginning. As a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as many people who have been there for us in our pulpits, are not able to know the purpose of the church. 
The soul and the whole purpose of the church is to feed them doctrine. Church is a ground and pillar of truth. Why people come there in Malachi 2, 7 to learn lips, to learn from the lips of the pastor, teacher, or the priest, the word of God. In Jeremiah 3, 15, he sent shepherds after his own heart who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Again, in Ephesians 4, 8 through 12, the sole purpose of pastor teachers is to completely teach them the word of God. Even in Colossians 1, 23 to 29, it is the sufferings of my Christ a little part what we need to pay by completely teaching them the sound word of God. So here we find when a new believer has come to the church, the straightaway point for him is to be fed upon the milk. So we need to have this work of ambassadors who are grown up as mature believers in Christ. The purpose and the order of Bible is very clear. Everything has been crystallized clear in its order, its rank, and the procedure and what he has kept for us. We have failed in the order. We have made chaos of the order, and we are planning to replace the order with what a little home could contain the Lord. As, they, as Solomon says, this house cannot contain thee. It's just a small thing. So we are trying to reduce the great heaven of the heaven of the heavens of the Lord to fit into that small house and say this will be the Christian way of life or this will be the doctrine oriented way of life but it's not possible dear brother so we need to clearly understand the Lord God who has made us his his ways are far higher than the ways of man Isaiah 55 we read that verses 7 through 9 his teachings are far greater than what a man can think so in each and everything, whatever you take, dear brethren, you need to understand that the Lord God whom we deal with, he says, for you after being born again in Christ, your daily work and your daily purpose is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. If you don't gather in the word of God, the devil which has left out the cosmos thinking. We have to be very clear. The believer cannot be possessed with demon possession, but the believer can be influenced by false doctrines. And that's how it happens. The demonic possession and false doctrines is what it is happening today in our pulpits to the core. Because if you don't find the right exegetical word to be taught in our pulpits, people will end up in listening the things pertaining to every mannerism of miracles or healings and tongues, and they will never eventually grow up. In 1 Corinthians 4, 1, we have been stated, let men account of us that we are the stewards of this mystery doctrine of the church age. Even in the same gospel of Luke chapter 8, we read, these things have been given to you, the secret things, the mystery doctrine of the church age, but to them it has not been given. So we talk to them in parables. So we need to understand that every church age believer should realize the purpose of Lord God in giving them this great mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that you could learn the mystery doctrine. And what happens when you don't come to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine? The world finds you that you are cleansed and you are swept and you are being absolutely garnished. And what does the man do now? You are a believer. Earlier you were not having the word of God. After believing in Christ, now you have been cleansed and you have been purified and kept apart. And you are not growing up in grace or taking in the word of God because you have now been transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. That's what a believer is. What do you mean to say a believer? A believer meant to say he is the light of the world and salt of the earth. And you yourself do not have that light and salt being still operating in you. Then quite obviously you will fall for this clent garnished place and the one which left you the thinking what you had earlier the thinking of this cosmos diabolicus what you had earlier what does it do now this goeth and taketh with him seven other spirits why does the word seven it knows how to destroy you by giving you lies to the core seven represents a completion number it knows perfectly where all to put you in your proper places to jam you up, calling you always to be busy being under Satan's yoke, making you to walk according to the prince of the power of this air in every mannerism of your life, trying to believe this vain philosophy, stoicism, or you have great men in the past like Aristotle, or their way of thinking and understanding or in the present in the 21st century you have many great men who have written their motivational books 
how to be one in this life or so many books you have a positive mental attitude books in all these things they try to make you up and even one of these inspirational authors they have quoted the bible but they cannot quote the scriptures and exegesis so they cannot give a complete revolution of their thought so you try to make up your life building upon these words if that is building upon for your positive mental attitude life at one end and in the seven number you can add whatever it could be on this earth for example the lustful patterns of your roles in nature going and searching for your dopism a drug addiction whatever you may take or the lust of money the lust of flesh that's what i call matrix of the lust that's how the world is if you don't get every thought into captivity for christ it will give you all mannerism of thoughts but lord of god has given in us the light of yehova which searches even the inward parts even the thoughts the motivations behind those thoughts so we have to be very careful as we read yesterday again in proverbs 2025 as well you speak rashly against the word of god and again you think you can pay back the woes of god no you cannot so in all of these things dear brother and you need to be very careful he teaches to us he go with and gets with him seven more spirits wicked than himself the word wicked meant to say as the people may think along in the standards of the mannerism of the life that they are living by robbing or by making this or by making that wicked over here meant to say sheer rot wicked here meant to say you sow to the wind and you reap war wind wicked here meant to say in simple words no truth but only myths what is your life have you ever thought of have you ever known if you don't understand the word of god or if you don't have any the word of god there is no life in you doesn't the words in matthew 44 deuteronomy 83 or luke 44 the same passage repeating for us to say man does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes or proceeds the thought from the mouth of the lord in every mannerism of your life you take dear brother and you will have only this it is the word of god and the wicked spirits than them who were there more worse than this one who he had it meant to say already he is a liar and he is getting with him super liars as the people you know in the present christendom they love to have pastors conference and they love to invite great many preachers the preachers who think they have their they have their ministry running around the globe with so many subscribers so many people you know as a blind leader turn the blind and this man suggests an expert liar that's what in simple words we could say if any pastor teacher do not go back to teach from the exegesis of the word of god there is no interpretation of the scripture the base of interpretation is exegesis no doubt how great a man may be no doubt how great a name and fame he may produce in this world if he is not exegeting the passages if he is not going back to the original language of the scriptures and digging and teaching to you the truth do not believe such pastors they are ruining your spiritual life these are the one who left like this demon of an unclean spirit along with him they try to influence by getting another seven more wicked than him you know like birds or like uh, wings together they flock that's what the color of the wings in the same manner these people they have their same thoughts to support each other they don't want to have enough guts to dare and to look what is the word of god what is this infallible and inerrant word of god and what it is teaching to us and where we are standing do we match tomorrow at the judgment seat of christ like the saints what he has prepared or are we standing in the asabias or asabia or asabians as we read three words 763 764 765 yesterday above all this body now is the temple of the living lord of a god how much more clear and pure and true we ought to be to the lord in the past they didn't have the one who dwells in the heavens of the heavens of the heavens now he dwells in this flesh in the flesh of you and me because of the prayer being prayed by Christ Jesus our Lord of a God in John 14:16 begging to God the Father to give us this Lord God the Holy Spirit and he says to his disciples how much more when God the Father if you ask him would give you greater things and you being evil know to give good gifts to your children so dear brethren here we have this passage 
wicked than himself. And you say, because this man is having so many subscribers, this man has done so many wonders, this man has done so many miracles, this man has done so many great things. But do you know how Lord God the Father would judge them? In Matthew 7, 21 to 23, God the Father would judge them in asking, Have you done the will of God the Father or not? I have seldom held to do with the standards of your miracles or healings or your prophesies or your great sign and wonders. That's what it would be in our little translation. Because you haven't done the great will and the work of Lord God, so I have seldom to do with you anything with you. You may be thinking you have done really great wonders. You might be thinking you have done really great things. But the word of God calls, I have seldom to do with you. Because you haven't done that which God the Father intends for you to do. That's very, very simple logic. So here also we find, these people, they enter seven more, saying because of his name, because of his fame, because of his great money in return, that also plays a great role. But not in the exegesis, not in the right word of God, they never consider him. And in fact, some people would say, he is an international preacher, he has been to this country, that country to preach. In all these wicked men we count here, they may be great in the sight of men, but never they will be great in the sight of Lord God. And these men are wicked to the core. Because when once you have been rougher, your work is to go back and take in the word of God. Your work is to carry your cross every day and follow my Christ. Your work is to be looking your inward path as well as your outward path, your soul and spirit followed by your flesh. Your work is to be spotless, blameless, immaculate. You cannot become immaculate until and unless the word of Lord God washes you. Our thinking has been changed, renovated, Romans 12, 1, 2, and 3. To such an extent that we need to confirm now to the image of his dear beloved son, Romans 8, 29. Confirming to the same complete mature stator of his thinking, Ephesians 4, verses 8 through 11 and 12. That's what our thinking is all about. We need to come. Till he could wash with the word of God. You cannot be there. So here we find... He walketh through dry places seeking rest. Because the dry places are the places where there is no wetness. There is no word of God. So when it finds a dry place, it wants to rest. But already the people are having superior word of God in them. Or do we have the word of God in you? So it cannot find rest when you have a wet place. Wet represents the word of God. So what does he do? It goes finding none. And he said, I will return unto the same house where I came from. And that's what whenever we find a great joy describing in Luke chapter 15, when a sinner converts, or repents and comes back to the kingdom of Lord God, there will be a great joy in the heaven. We read that. And that joy is not for that day. That is the beginning of the day of joys to come day by day. And if that believer who has been now a convertee, and if he's not been given proper care by the pastor teacher, and if he's not been taught, this will be his fate. There it comes the play of the church. There it comes the play of the pastor teacher. That's what it is lacking today in our pulpits. In a great many evangelists in the past, proving the signs of times or the wisdom of their age, they love to become, by making others to become believers in the Lord, but they don't hand over them to the right pastor teacher. A right pastor teacher who has been bona fide, gifted, male spiritual one can train them up according to the word of God and make them proper men or spiritual men for Lord's glory and for God's work. But you know what happens when this evangelist is trying to make some converts or he's having some converts? This evangelist doesn't have time. He thinks, the converts whom I got, if I hand over it to the right pastor teacher, I will lose my business of making money from them. Because you know, it's a dealing with all the way when an unbeliever believes in the Lord and if he's a rich one. Do you know the believer, the one who has told like an evangelist, he waits upon his money. But this evangelist is not clear in his work. 
This evangelist has become a corrupted one. And this evangelist goes on not to give the right word of God, but he becomes a hurdle to the right word of God. So he doesn't hand over them to the pastor teacher so that when he was been cleansed and when he was been healed, the thinking part of it will come again to search. And when it finds that it has been cleansed and garnished and till now there are no seeds sowed in that, it has become like a ground what we call as fallow grounds. And this fallow grounds, not fallow grounds, fallow grounds. And we have to break up those fallow grounds by sowing in the word of God. First of all, it cannot become a fallow ground until and unless the word of God is being sowed. But there is no word of God being sowed there. There is no signs of growth from milk to bread, from bread to strong meat. So what does it become? It becomes fallow grounds. And when it becomes fallow grounds, they allow to daub them with untempered mortar, with lies. They don't make them disciples. They don't make them to come back and grow and change according to the right thinking of Christ, conforming to the image of his dear beloved son, for which cause they have been predestined in my Christ. So all the procedure fails. And Satan knows very well your thinking is not matching to the word of God. So it comes and it knows very well. You are still the same as, I have, as you have been cleansed by believing in the Lord. So it goes with it and tries to get seven more jammed up people, wicked than him. And as they jam up themselves, wicked than him, then quite obviously they fail. And what do they do? They become, as this man is not having the word of God, they quite obviously become to the standards of what we call over here in the work as it says in verse number 25, 26, more wicked than himself, and they enter in, and they dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. That's what it happens. When they dwell, and they enter, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. So the same parable we find in Matthew chapter 12, teaching from 43 to 45. He goes on to teach for us that in the same gospel, in this Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 to 45, he teaches the same principle. The unclean spirit, when it returns, here also we find, when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Here the word we find, empty. And this is what you have to look, the word what is called as empty. And here, the word empty meant to say, it doesn't have in it the word of God. The word empty is missing in Luke chapter 11 verses 25. But here in Matthew chapter 12 in verse 44, we have this word called as empty. And the word empty meant to say that there is no doctrine. And what a sad part it is for us to look in the lives of this man. How many men are perishing without having this doctrine in them. Though we have been given this great infallible and ignorant word of God. If the new converts give them the right word of God, if they are really great men, like the way these people growing up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, in comparison to the standards of daily carrying their cross, that is, from disciples to grammatias, how much burdened work they have to do when they have come to perform that the right ambassadorship work which is hanging upon their shoulders. They don't train them up, they don't teach them up, so quite obviously this will be the end. Quite obviously this will be the way that they reject. So he says the word they empty, he findeth it to be empty and the Greek word is very, very important over here. It is not the way kenos, but it is called as scholazo. S-C-H-O-L-A-Z-O. 
Do you know what is this scholars were meant to say? To cease from labor and to become idle, to loiter, to be at leisure. This is what it happens, dear brethren. You don't take up your cross every day and follow my Christ. You become loiter. You become vacant. You become empty. You devote yourself to idleness. The word kole meant to say freedom from labor. And it is a place where there is leisure for anything. And that's what it is. You forgo and forget from the labor. So it is like a place of your great vacation. <laughs> when you don't come to take in or to take hold of the word of God, you become empty. It's kolazo. And this kolazo is freedom from labor, to cease from labor, to be free from the things pertaining to the word of God. Here we find this word for us in the Matthew 12, but we don't find the word in Luke. And he findeth him empty, and then swept, but you're clean, clean by sweeping, Sarah, oh. You claim with your works, acting like to be rituals. You love to come weekly ones, following the standards of this world. Clint you are. You say weekly I attend the church. I stand in the choir and sing the songs. Monthly I give my tithes. This is what you people are. First of all, scholazo, and then sarao, cleansed by 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 cleaning, and then garnished, cosmio, to put in order for you in a proper ornament. And what is the do? They get to give you with honor and gain honor. A false honor and false gaining of honor. That's what it happens, dear brother. The people who are not able to make up their honor in the word of God, laboring. They come to gain honor now by giving their dedication to such false life, idle life. To tell you in simple words, if you don't labor every day in taking in the word of God, you are idle. You are empty. From emptiness you become to follow the rituals of this world, vain philosophies of this world. You say, weekly once I am attending the church, I am paying regularly the monthly subscriptions of this church. That's clent, swept. A clent. And from there on where you come, you come for garnished. A false honor, false gain. So, when the demon finds you in such way, you know what does it do? It goes to get with it seven more wicked one than what, than, than what it was earlier. And what does the Bible say for us? Because people don't love to talk what the Bible say. They love to talk what the men would say. Because they would say, give for us our ministry, you will be blessed. Do this and you will be blessed. But here the word of Lord God, caution of warning, teaches to you. If the churches are not established according to the will of God, in daily training them up and doing the work of God, this is what will be the result. He says for us over here, in this great and unique parable to learn our life, he says, Then goeth he and taketh with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell therein, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. And you are not understanding, if you don't take in the word of God, if you are not understanding, the word of God is your life. Your last state, when you think you are really grown up in false honor, false gain, when you have really been in a proper way of cleanse and kept it clean, you may be thinking, every day I am cleaning myself, but you are not able to get out from that circle called as Asabiya. So when you're not able to make up or get up from the circle called as Asabians, no matter whatever cleanse you are, no matter however garnished you might be, and no matter however false honor you might be receiving with men, you know what all these things goes on to be? As the British calls them as flop, there is nothing in the outward beauty, so it would be. Man only loves to look your outward achievements. The way how you think that you constructed a great church, by spending some some billions of dollars over there. That's only outward. Then looks only outward. But inward, you're seized from your labor long back. You become idle. 
If any believer do not take in the word of Lord God, he has ceased from his labor. And what happens when you take a cease or a rest for a long time and become idle? God the Father would say, the fourth year, when the gardener would come and plead, Lord, this people, one more year you give the chance, I will till it. And then I will try to put a manure and a word and a seed. If this year also, if this plant doesn't give you the fruit of Lord, why you have to waste your place? The same ground could be used for another tree, isn't it? Put to death. And why people are dying today before the time appointed for them in sin unto death? Why the people are not doing the things which have been there in accord with the word of God? Because they have become empty. Scholaro they have become. They have ceased from the labor of the Lord. They have become idle. They are not taking their cross every day and following my Christ. They are not become to be grown up as Christ. Do you know when we grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, what the people could be trembling looking upon us? We have an example for us to understand. From Esther chapter 8, when Mordecai becomes a king. Do you know these words are very important for us? When Lord God the Father records and pens them and keeps for us, as an admonition to learn from these things, we have to be very alert when we are looking upon this. In chapter 8, in verse number 10, And he wrote in the king a serious name and sealed it with the kings, because already they are finding now a crisis for the Haman plot what he plotted against the Jews. It with the king's ring and sent letters by post on horseback and riders on mules, camels, and dormitories. And verse number 11, wherein the king granted the Jews, which were in every city, to gather themselves together and to stand for their life. Again, the word we find over here, Nepesh, the soul, to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish all the power of the people and province that would assault them, both little ones and women, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. Upon one day in all provinces of King Assyria's, namely upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, in the month of Ada, the copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all the people, and that the Jews should be ready against the day to avenge themselves on their enemies. So the post that rode upon mules and camels went out, in verse number 14, being hastened and pressed on by the king's commandment, and the decree was given at Shushan the palace. And now the man before Haman was to be killed or assassinated. Mardukai, he says, verse number 15, went out, was been honored with his royalty of his image, what a man could be done if he saves the king's life. And Mardukai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white, and with a great crown of gold, and with a garment of fine linen and purple. And the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. Do you know what is this word? Earlier, he did not even make Esther to tell to the king to reveal the identity that she was a Jew. But when the man becomes a king, Mordecai, or equivalent to the rank of that king, being honored, now when he is coming to the place Shushan, there is a great shining of gladness, a joyful merry. In the same manner, once again, if in our pulpits or in your lives, the word of Lord God tries to reign, like this Mordecai, in his white and blue appear, well, that's a description of his royalty. You know, the people around you, they will shine in gladness. The word rejoice in the word called as halal, or tasal, which is meant to say to make shining, to become fearful, to become a sound, clear expression of joy, to shine out from your life. Rather than your position becoming worse than the first what you were when you entered into the believing world, your, your position as the word of Lord God reigns in you, it has to be shining. 
It has to be to such kind of a great, shining, cheerful countenance of expression from the people of the Shushan because of you. So wherever you go, the people should recognize what you are. And you know what has happened? He teaches to us the Jews, the people who believed in the Lord, for example, Christians, because of the work of Mordecai, what is doing, the Jews had light. The word Ora, which is origin again for us from Or, and the word figuratively meant to say light of joy and happiness. When we are walking in truth and doing the will of the Lord and work of the Lord, the people of we as being Christians called as brothers, as the word says in Psalms, how great it is when brothers live together in unity. In First Timothy, he says, especially to the household of the believing section, do good, do not harm them. They know how, when we as Christians come together, not in the standards of your fakery of lies, denominations, but in the standards of exegesis and isagogics and categories, with the right dispensing technique of dispensations, because the word of Lord God is subject to one interpretation. Because we come to serve the Lord God in one mind, in one accord, in one spirit. And when we serve the Lord God in one mind, in one accord, and in one spirit, we have only one interpretation. Not the denominations where these people, they have clubbed out. Some would say Pentecost like Apollos. Some would say, I am Baptist, Cephas. And some would say, I am Paul. Like the standards of this Roman Catholicism. We don't find these divisions. We find only one in Christ. That's what exegesis can do. So when we all come together as one unity in one brother, then the light of joy and happiness will be in us. Therefore, he says, the Jews had light, the first one. And then gladness, simak, the word meant to say a great pleasure in God. When you have light, then you will have great pleasure of God. And when the Lord God is with us, we don't find many evils or many distractions for us, as mentioned in Deuteronomy 31, verse 17. And they will realize when they have many evils and many distractions, because God is not with us, Elohim is not with us. And if Elohim is with us, the return of that or the exact opposite of that, it would be great shimak, great pleasure, great joy, great gladness. What a great word we have recorded for us. Rather than having such joy, rather than having such great life, rather than enjoying such great pleasure in the Lord, our first place, what you entered to be believers in Christ, at the judgment seat of Christ, when you look your last standards, it will be worst because you always wanted empty honor. You always wanted idle labor to cease from your labor. Because you don't want to carry a cross and follow my Christ. Though repeatedly we have been mandated every day to tell, carry a cross and follow my Christ. You never wanted to do that. It's a labor for you. If you don't labor by carrying your cross every day and following my Christ, then the word of Lord God says, not eat that day. Because the word in the Hebrew of Genesis says, eating you shall eat. First you shall eat the spiritual food and then you shall eat the physical food. But you haven't labored to take the spiritual food, then why you eat the physical food? Where will be a great joy for you? Where will be the Simak originate? Where will be the glad result in your life? Where there will be always a rejoicing of exceeding greatness? You know what is that glee which applies to you always? You're missing it out. Therefore he says, we have to not just be there in the standards of joy, but showing joy, making gladful, making great merry in the Lord. And that's what we need to be gladdening out. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to rejoice. And then he says, the Jews had light and gladness. And joy, the third word, sason. And this word is very important, called as cheerfulness. Today in the minds of this man, when we look, because of this COVID-19 pandemic sicknesses, they have lost the cheerfulness upon the face. And you know what the word says in one of the Proverbs? Or I think it should be in the book of Job, the poetry books, in one of the poetry books. 
It teaches to us very effectively and clearly, dear brethren. The point is very simple. If you have your inner heart cleansed and pure in the presence of the Lord, your face will always be in cheerfulness. Your face will always smile with the joy of the Lord. Therefore, in Philippians 4, 6, we have been stated, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, we say to you, rejoice. You know, these things, how important it is. When you find the things that are pure, when you find the things that are having joy, when you find the things that are honest and having virtue in them, then only you will have joy. And you don't labor enough to do the will and the work of God every day. How you could have joy? How you could be light of the, how you could be light to the world or light of the world when you are alive over here, because much has been given for us and much has been expected from us. So where is the simiac? A gladness in your life, great pleasure for God. Where is a joy in your life, cheerfulness upon your face? Let's go back and look. Anyone who has been COVID positive, the fear the trembling nature, what he has, and the things what he does. You will truly find out that he is not happy. His face has lost out that cheerfulness. He doesn't seek, he doesn't search. He fears and he trembles. Why? Every day his labor has been seized, he has become empty, dear brother. How many days more you can keep the things that have been rusted? If you have a junk of iron in front of your home, for example, any missionary or the things which are made like a motorcycle or a bike or a four-wheeler car or jeep, you keep there, they're there for a long time. And then it gets rust. It has become idle. And if the things that have been rotten out, what do you do? You just put it to the scrap. Here, Lord God the Father, before your time, he will put you to death. That's as simple as that. Because you're not exercising the will of God. You're not working in the mind of Christ. You're not doing that which is right and perfect to the glory of God every day. So when you're not doing it, then quite obviously you will become rust. You'll become empty. You'll become idle. You'll become a person called as seized from the labor. So you will not have joy in you. You will not have cheerfulness upon your face. You will be thinking if it is morning, why it is morning. You will be waiting for the evening. When it is evening, you will be thinking when will the day come. And you will be having panic in your heart. You will be having trembling in your heart. You will be having depression in your mind. Your eyes will fail off. Deuteronomy 28, we read that. You want to look what are the details of your life that you are passing through? Thinking that you can keep God in a small home and you don't go to consult the Lord God who is heavens above the heavens above the heavens? Deuteronomy 28 will give you all the details of life, beginning with verse number 15, the curses, he says. Just go back and look your life where you stand. Including your fever, including your piles, including everything, whatever you take. A hemorrhoid, he uses the word. A great harm things will look in Leviticus 26, your children will be eaten by you. We haven't faced a situation yet. But we have to wake up not to be idle any longer. Because it is Lord God who has given us this great joy, he says. It is the Lord of our God who has set forth for us as that we have to be the light to this people. We have to be the great simiac gladness to this people. We have to be the people of great joy. That's what Christians have been called. In Ephesians 1, when we read, to the praise of his glory and his grace, I have chosen you for my name and praise. The same thing he says in Jeremiah 31, I have chosen these people for a name, for a praise and for honor. But they have left it out. He even describes in chapter 13 of Jeremiah, we have to learn these things very carefully, dear brethren. So why there is no cheerfulness? Because there is no display of joy in your heart. Do you know when we get joy? We get joy when we are having complete satisfaction in the will of God, in the promise of God. Have you ever thought of? You get joy or you have a display of joy upon your heart. When the things, there are no hurdles to you. When everything is going great and good. You have joy. And that we find only through the word of God. In spite of such 
COVID-19 pandemic sickness and circumstances or our any mannerism of political, social, economical crisis. Because God the Father is in control of history. And when Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ controls history, we need not fear because we are his bond slaves, we walk according to his will. So we display the great joy like a bright root, having great cheerfulness in our heart. So dear brethren, we need to learn how the joy could be displayed. And when you are displaying this joy, he says, and honor a car. And the word ekar meant to say Y-E-Q-A-R, preciousness, splendor, pomp, esteemed ones, that is to be concretely wealth, because we are the spiritual wealth, and that has to be in great costliness, in dignity, in honor, in price. The word yakar, Y-A-Q-A-R, to be highly esteemed, to be valuable, to be prized, to be more costly. That's what we Christians are. We are more costly, we are highly valued, we are highly prized. We are highly esteemed, the price that you cannot pay. Therefore he says, you will never understand in First Corinthians 6, you have been bought with a great price, glorify the Lord God in your flesh. Because your body is now the temple of the living Lord of a God, you will never understand your price for what and how you have been purchased. Never you will realize this price. And yet, dear brethren, the Jews had because Mordecai came in and appeared to them in his royal apparel, and then he made them to understand. If the word of God could reign, what a great pleasure it would be. And then he said, In every province and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, and a feast, and a good day. And many of the people of the land <laughs> became Jews. Because of you, they should become Christians. Because of the fear of the Jews fell upon them. And the word fear meant to say dread, terror, pakat. Because we have been dwelt with such great Lord God as even Rakeb says about my Lord. We have heard about this God and there is no spirit in us. We have lost completely out. The same standards we look here. The fear of the Jews fell upon upon them and then many of the people of the land became Jews how many of the people are having that fearing nature in us of our holiness to them so that they could believe in my Christ or at least we become like a people of great light like a people of great simiac gladness like the people of great joy, susias, are exhibiting cheerfulness of great bright glory, or are we becoming the people of great prize, honor? The Jews had this, the word records, the Christians, what do we have? We have in us emptiness, we have in us plant nicely, we have in us garnished, the word in the Greek meant to say, well honored in the, in the sight of men, not in the sight of God. And what will happen when it finds you? No word of God. It will go and get with it another seven more demons. And absolutely it is going to destroy because your later stage will be worse than the stage what you have begun. And this is ample to the core in our pulpit today, dear brother. The man who did not want to reveal his identity, Mordecai, when he became an honored one, passed down the king's ring and the command, saying that we have to avenge our enemies. And when he comes in such great royal apparel, there is a great joy for the people. 
And once again, when the word of Lord God comes to rule and reign in us, we will have a great joy. Once again, if the word of Lord God rules and reigns in you, you will have great cheerfulness. The greater you reject the word of God, the greater you will not be in the work of God. You will be seized from your labor, empty, scholarizo. Therefore he says, And the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. The word rejoice was shining in great semiac gladness, making merry and happy, because the Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. Because of us do the place rejoice, because of us the people will believe in Christ. Because we are having or are we having that great gladness, light, joy and honor. But in Ephesians 1 we have been said long back, we have been chosen before the foundation of the world to be the praise of glory of his name on this earth. And when you have been given such great work in the church age, you yourself don't have in your life that gladness, that joy, that great honor and light because you reject the word of God. And the greater you reject the word of God, the greater there is no joy in you. And the greater when there is no joy, how you could make others to be glad? How will the fear and the terror of you, Pakad, will fall upon them? And many of the people on account of you, they should believe to become Jews, we read. Or it will be the same, the spirit searching out in you, going with it, getting seven more wicked. And the situation of your later end is worse than what you begin. We have to be very careful about these things, dear brethren. Besides that, we have called... In this great and unique dispensation of the church age, as the word of Lord God records, to be the joy of his people, because we are now the temple of the living Lord of God. The greater we reject the word of God to grow up in his grace, in his knowledge, the greater you are trying to confine yourself into a small home, rather than looking and understanding that my Lord, my rock, my God, even the heavens above the heavens above the heavens cannot contain him. And has given to us his revolution saying even in Deuteronomy 29.29 29, The things that are needed and enough for you on this earth they are revealed. And the things that you want to have in the heaven they have been given for you in the heaven. And the things that are needed for us on this pilgrimage trip it's enough. We have the 66 books with proper isagogics, categories and exegesis. We could be the people like mentioned in Esther 8.16, a people of great light, a people of great gladness, a people of great joy and a people of great honor. And because of us, the fear falls upon the unbelievers so that they could believe now in my Christ. And that what is happening today in our pulpit, dear brother, we need to be very careful and alert. Every day is precious gift of the Lord. We cannot be still idle and empty. We cannot cease from our work. If you are not laboring for the word of God, you have ceased from the work of God. And when you have ceased from the work of God, no matter whatever you labor, it's absolutely vain and sheer rot. We need to labor for the will of God and for the work of God to the highest. Laboring for the work of God, we are kept alive. And if not, you cannot display the great joy of the Lord in your life. And greater you can display the great joy of Lord God in your life, greater you become a recipient of sadness, gloominess, trembling heart, and above all ending up in depressions of your minds. Think over this issues, dear brethren. We are not making you to get afraid. We are making you to look the truth. Thus said the Lord. Thus said the Lord. We never want you to be trembling by giving you the truth. 
We want you to build up. Break up your fallow grounds. Don't get tampered with untampered mortar, which is lies. Know the truth and the truth can set you free. Because tomorrow we are answerable for every Nagad word as Eli asked Samuel to say in 1 Samuel 3. Nothing we can hit and everything we have to declare. And it is Lord God what it seemeth fit unto him to do, he will do it. Whatever is fitting into his eyes, he does it. And we don't wait others' approval. Because God the Father works according to his will as he did in the case of Jonah's ministry. Because he, he knows none to be perished, but he wants everyone to be saved and come to the thorough knowledge of his glory. We just caution you to come back, to look into the light so that you can have your light and understand the true glory of the Lord God and work for his glory on this earth. As a people chosen for his glory, for a name, for a fame, above all in the kinekatesis of this church age, to do the great will and the unique will of God the Father. Dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In audible telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior. That's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple. Believe in Christ, we shall be saved. Let us for the believer, the greatest might is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor, teach us the greatest might is to carry so thorn the God. Herald the word in season, out of season, because the diamond from my witnesses, where you have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses, in the link trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two, diamond from my witnesses, our hearers. If they are no hearers, dear brother, and do not worry, be such nature, the entire Holy Ghost of your witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is for us, O Lord, to have fellowship through the word. Father, what else can we ask, O Lord, on this earth than to be faithful witness of the all that is of our life? As Father, not to be accounted into our subians, Father, you have counted us to be your great saints on this earth. To the direction, Father, you have given us this flesh to be thy temple, thy body. And I tell Lord how we could live it empty. So that the things pertaining to the cosmos thinking of this world could enter in and make worse than the position of earlier what they were. I tell Lord these people being stuck up in their rituals and denominations, they are losing out the glory of God. Help us, Father, to be the people as you mentioned in Esther 8 16, a people of great light as you choose them earlier in the past the Jews a people of great joyness a people of great gladness and a people of great honor and because of us a lot of fear to be trembled upon the mind on this world and they could come back to believe the holiness of the Lord God through the holy manner walk of life that we walk through showing them what a great joy and gladness we have in us through the word of God to this section, Father, help us to cleanse out every mannerism of evil thought that is against thee and make us to be applicable only for thy glory. Such as diligently, Father, and see if there is an offense within us. Lead us in the way of everlasting truth. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord.